There has been a lot of noise on the internet about the new availability NOC 4J2. Most of them are very difficult and technical to understand. We have invited the security expert to explain this to us. Welcome, Jason, to join us. So what's the big deal with the new reliability? Well, this is the biggest security event in the past decade. Some would say this is the biggest security vulnerability since internet was born. It applies to both consumers and enterprises. Uh, in the United States, uh, 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 CISA, the Cybersecurity and the Infrastructure Security Agency, have turned the exploit critical and I have asked all the providers uh, or vendors to prioritize software updates. In Germany, the agency BSI have called, rated as the highest threat level and then calling it extremely critical threat situation. Who might have these vulnerabilities? Everyone, apparently. So, but before I get in there, a little bit technical background. This term, log for j 2 is essentially being used by a very large percentage of the Java program uh, developer in the last decade. If you're using client-server applications, chances are, and you're using logs, chances are you're going to be use this. Java is, is, is the top programming language used by business in the world, right? Now, <clears throat> who might have this vulnerability? It impacts really you know, uh, uh, any software used by enterprises and government globally. So um, I'll give you some idea. Uh, we have a smart system called Global Threat Intelligence. Uh, we actually have the capability to scan across the internet and learn what systems might be vulnerable. So last week, as soon as we heard about this vulnerability, we wrote a little script and just within one hour, we found 3,000 servers with such a vulnerability. And then uh, within the last few days, hundreds of services has been identified. And on that list, there's government, education, healthcare, manufacturing, you name it. Any industry have that vulnerability. And it goes across the geography as well. Now, um, now it also applies to you and me, meaning consumers, right? Now, um, Bluetooth headphones has been demonstrated uh, to be vulnerable to this attack. Um, and then people play games. Uh, do you play Minecraft? Yeah, I'm a big fan of it. Well, then your machine might have been already been compromised because of this vulnerability. Someone could use your machine to uh, run a crypto miner uh, for that as well. Now, on more serious notes, um, major e-commerce websites across the globe have been found to have such vulnerability. Uh, even one of the largest, most valuable a car manufacturer, their car entertainment system has been found vulnerable with such vulnerability as well. What's the potential impact of this kind of vulnerability? Well, in the technical term, we call this a zero-day arbitrary code execution. It, it, it is the, the single biggest, most critical vulnerability in the past decade. So what it does is it allows remote code execution without credentials. Meaning, I don't need any username and password to any of your company network, and I can get in, and, uh, and then we can take over your system. What does that mean? I can get any of your most important data, your customer information, your intellectual property. I can, I can take that. I can remove it, or I can encrypt it, right? So that's one of the things. Now, you may wonder, does it require an extremely difficult skill set to do it? Not really. Anybody like you or me could do it. Now, I could teach you, but I won't teach you, right? It's, uh, it, it, all you need to do is find out the right string to shove into, uh, into, the, into the, the, the radio applications. And then this flaw is pretty, pretty easy. And, and, and then anybody you know, without sophisticated computer skills can actually take over a system. That's why it's such a big deal. How about customer with their own softwares? Well, um, customers um, th with their own software may pose the biggest problem because oftentimes customers develop their own software either internally or externally, um, but they don't have a sophisticated teams to, to understand what's going on. So uh, most customers use a third-party software provider or 
uh, open source. Um, you know, so if you, if, if you use any of these things like Elasticsearch, uh, uh, Kafka, Strouds, or uh, Apache Foundations, these things are all subject to that vulnerability. So Apache Software Foundation assigned a maximum CVS uh, crit criticality, 10 out of 10. So this, this is uh, essentially the biggest vulnerability. Now, uh, what that means for um, customer, uh, our customer is, in terms of software security, it's not just about uh, safe programming, but also understanding your supply chain as well, your software supply chain, make sure it's, it's definitely over there as well. So what's going on in the past few days? Busy. You know, we've all been pretty busy. Uh, you know, for um, <coughs> for uh, uh, for software vendors, they're busy analyzing their own software and uh, applying patches, uh, relevant patches to, to the providing patches and apply patches. You know, calling customers and, and, and apply those patches. Uh, now, hackers are equally busy. The scanning the internet, mm -hmm. like well, you know, we could scan. They could scan as well. Find out which systems are vulnerable. They are also busy developing tools, leveraging such techniques to actually gain control of remote systems. So we foresee that uh, in the coming weeks, uh, a lot of ransomwares are going to be using this vulnerability to gain controls. What do you suggest our customer to do the next? Well, as a customer, uh, uh, one of the first thing you want to do is, is to understand what's going on, what, what you have within your environment. We call it a self-assessment of your software repository. Right? You want to do that as soon as possible. Um, so we are a security company. Uh, we actually have an active list of what software we use and its dependencies. We can actually trace it down within, within hours. We can actually find that pretty, pretty easily. Uh, we have a pretty good security uh, practice. Now for most customers, this may take weeks or it may be impossible to, for them to find out what they may be using. So in cases like that, um, you may need some a quicker assessment. Um, and I'd like to uh, 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 su suggest some automated assessment provided by vendors like us can help you. So one of the tools that we have is called NDR, Network Detection and Response. It sits uh, it was in the core switch of your network listen on all applications, internal traffics, and we'll be able to find uh, systems with that vulnerability. And we can actually tell you on that as well. Uh, on the server, you can also deploy uh, a tool that help you to understand essentially a list of your software and its components, and we can actually help you to find out which systems are vulnerable, and, and, and then you can actually get that list going forward. Once I have uncovered my vulnerabilities, what do the customer to do next? So um, as any software uh, practice, the first step to do is patch. If you develop your own software using uh, uh, Log4j2, uh, it's pretty easy. You, you, you need to go to Apache Foundation and download uh, their second version of the, uh, the patch, and you're, you're good to go. But for many customers, in fact, for most customers, it's not that easy because there are many software you can't apply patch to or impossible. There will be legacy software or other embedded software like IOTs that you can't really even touch uh, to, to do that. In that case, you have a couple of options to do that. One of them is to change the configuration within the Java code. And, and we have recommendations on three different alternatives. Again, contact us, we can provide the details for you. Um, the other thing is, if you can't apply the actual physical software patch, use something called a virtual patch. This can be found on network uh, like a firewall, or IPS, uh, or endpoint. Again, we have these uh, these uh, uh, solutions. We can actually help you to provide virtual patching as well. Um, and then on top of that, uh, definitely deploy uh, a, uh, a network detection and response to have a better understanding of your environment for, for asset. Uh, as well as detection and response, which I, 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 can, I can talk a little bit more. How would any customer know if they are compromised? Okay, so this is a very good question. So first of all, it's if you're compromised, don't worry, um, because um, it, it, you know you're not alone, and it can you know, you know most customers have a lot of uh, existing security like firewalls or or or, or 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 endpoint protection already in place, but that 
is oftentimes enough. These preventions are not enough. Um, what you need is, is a much stronger detection response capability. capability. So there are a few things. One is that from a process point of view, you want to perform log reviews. Either you yourself or ask your uh, MSSPs to provide a log review to look for any abnormal behaviors. Uh, secondly, uh, you want to deploy some uh, advanced, uh, 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 more sophisticated uh, techniques such as our MDR to help you uh, to provide much better detection. That means, you know, hacker takes multiple steps to do things. We can actually detect their activity much earlier on. So that's a detection. Also, the NDR can provide a better response. Should we detect something, we can actually help you to mitigate uh, such as uh, security events, and, and, and we can do that as well. Should you have uncover any security instance, you can actually contact us. We do have an instant response team that can actually help you to analyze and perform better security patching. Thank you for sharing, Jason. I feel much safer now. My pleasure.